Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, we're going to focus on the S&P 500 today. The uh, SPY is what we're going to actually use. We'll look at the moving average view, traditional technical analysis chart, then take a look at the Elliott Wave picture. And then we're going to look at a couple of indicators and then focus on the commodity area, look at uh, oil, gold, and silver. All right, so here's an ETF dashboard that I share with my members every week. The interesting thing about this week is we had 16 sectors up and not a single sector was negative, identical to two, three weeks ago. So two out of the last three weeks have had 16 up and zero down. We're getting a little extreme in this move. Okay, so uh, the strongest sector was home builders. Why? Because interest rates uh, took a pretty good hit. Uh, and nothing was red. And then when you look at year to date, semiconductors have been on fire then and they've been the leader all year long. Utilities continues to be the leader to the downside. Now, when you look at the index ETFs, the Russell 2000 had a pretty good bounce this last week, up 5.4 percent. But the Nasdaq 100, the Qs, continues to be the leader to the upside on the year, up 45 percent. So interesting picture. Two out of the last three weeks have been all sectors positive. Kind of interesting uh, extreme, I think, that we're getting to here. You know, before I go to the SPY, let's take a look at quick at a side-by-side -side view of the industrials, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ 100. The Dow was up 664 points this last week. The S&P 500 up 99 points. The NASDAQ 100 up 309. Now, it's kind of interesting, you know, three week, pretty strong three week moves here on all three of these. Uh, but we've seen this kind of story before. When you look back over into uh, 22, you know, the prior year, you know, the counter trend move that we had back in, uh, when was it, March? And then we, it was a three week move. Then we had a four week move in here in August. So, you know, we're going to run out of steam here soon. It's going to be really interesting. The same, it doesn't matter which one you look at. It was the same kind of counter trend moves in here. So we'll take a look at the SPY here. And this, we're getting real close to taking out the highs on the NASDAQ 100. And uh, it's going to move us. If we do, it's going to move me into the alternate count. And I'll talk about that on the SPY here in just a minute. But here's the picture that I what I call my moving average view, because this is where I just talk about normal technical analysis picture versus the Elliott wave. The spies were up 56 cents on Friday, very tight little cluster the last three days after that big explosion that happened on Tuesday, up 10.18 for the week. OK, so the picture I've got as my preferred count is the and I'm looking down at my notes. The orange analysis. Now, when I look at this, I, I'm just going from the peak that happened back here on December, you know, the week of December, I'm sorry, the week of January 2nd uh, of last year. And uh, here's what I'm looking at right here. This is my preferred count. My preferred count says we had intermediate wave one down, intermediate wave two back, and that we're working our way down in terms of the count here within intermediate wave three. And I actually don't really need to see that degree on the weekly view. Let me go and take a look at the uh, the daily. So here's the picture. I think we had a leading diagonal pattern down here for wave one and a very sharp, very strong move in here for wave two. The, the thing, it has gotten very deep and this is two versus one percentage wise, right? So we're above 78.6%, but we're back in that area where we could be getting resistance and should be getting resistance from prior highs in here. Now, the thing that bothers me about this picture is that we really haven't had much of a corrective move on this zigzag. I mean, it's been almost a straight line and we're getting a little bit overbought in terms of where we're at now. What is the alternate scenario? You know, the alternate is if we take out this high, then you can't be counting our way down in an intermediate wave three. OK, so the alternate view says, well, we could count this first move down as a three wave move as an ABC 
for wave A. And then we could be pushing back up in wave B in here of a larger flat, okay? An A, B, C type move, okay? And the C wave would be a five wave. This needs to be a three wave move. And that's why I've got it labeled like this as a WXY, a com combined double zigzag, very complex. But I'm only moving to this scenario if we take out this January, July high, not January, July high of this year. Okay, so we've had a strong three, three week move. Is it about to run out of steam? We're going to find out over the next week or two. Now, next week's probably going to be a pretty low volume week. You know, holiday shortened and no trading on Thursday, half day on Friday. So we'll see what happens here and what kind of follow through we get. OK, so that's the picture on the SPY. That's where we sit. Let's take a look at a couple of indicators. And the first one I want to look at is the VIX. OK, so the VIX has continued to push lower in here. So we're sitting at 13.80, down 52 cents on Friday. So every time you start to get a little reversal type candle in here, you think you're going to you know, push higher and go you, the next day. We don't even take out that high. You know, say, you know, it happened there. It happened on Friday, Thursday, Friday. Couldn't take out the high on Friday. You know, much less are we closing above the 10 day moving average, the blue line. OK, so we haven't even started the turn yet, but we're getting down into this territory where these lows, these closing lows, where was this? 12.91. What's the closing low here? 12.82. So just slightly below that 13 level. And this is where, you know, support seemed to come in, where the market, the rallies ran out of steam. So we're, you know, you get down here below 14, get closer to 13. I think we're getting into that zone right now. Let's take a look at uh, a couple of others, the percent of stocks above their 50 day moving average in the S&P. We're sitting at 70.2 percent. So after the moving average flipped to the upside in here, we've we've rallied pretty strongly right in sync with the index and we're right getting up into uh, starting to get up into that rarefied air of 70 percent and above. We'll see how much further this wants to push. And when we look at the percent of stocks above their 200 day, not quite as much. We're back in uh, that 50 percent range, sitting at 51.1 percent when you round it. So we had a big move down. And then here at the end of October, we've turned and now we're pushing higher. Uh, we'll see where we run out of steam here on these uh, these indicators. Let's take a look at uh, commodities. I'm going to look at the Bloomberg Commodity Index. Well, here's the Bloomberg Commodity Index. It was down 31 cents for this last week. Now, the interesting thing about this is I really thought we were potentially putting in a nice little head and shoulders bottom here, the bottom of this pullback. And uh, and then it just never wanted to push above, you know, that neckline, that trend line there. So then, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I looked at this and I said, you know, we could be doing a little symmetrical triangle. And then the, the week before last, we, we broke down, we closed below that trend line. And then this last week here, uh, we tried to rally back up into it and go, but it failed. And the entire little body has been down below the trend line. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see, are we breaking down? Do we got more fall through to the downside? When I take a look at oil and USO, what I like about USO, let me just go to this moving average view first. It really mirrors uh, crude oil futures WTI very well. And uh, it was up two dollars and seventy cents on Friday and uh, down a dollar four for the week. So right now, my Elliott wave count is this. I think we've got a little more to come back to pull back in here. I think we're doing an ABC. Uh, zigzag pattern. And so if this is the case, this is what I'm looking for, a five wave move. What you don't know when you get a C wave of a zigzag, are you going to get an impulse or an ending diagonal pattern? Right now it looks like an impulse pattern to me. So I'm continuing to look for this to uh, come down further 
And right now, the way the price action is acting, it's very gappy and, you know, kind of free falling at moments uh, in here. So it's starting to look like a third wave type move. And that's the picture I've got on USO. So now let's take a look at GLD. So gold, it continues to try to push to the upside. We had our little pullback in here from minor wave two. I don't have it uh, showing over here on the weekly. This is the weekly, here's the daily. Okay, but it looks like it's trying to push. On Friday, it was just down two cents. And for the week, though, up $4.16. So it almost reversed all of the loss of the, uh, the week of November 5th but didn't quite get there. But I'm still looking at this and giving the bulls the benefit of the doubt here on gold. I really don't know what's going to cause it. I mean, are, are, is inflation really going to be coming back steadily and strong? Is there some other reason uh, that's going to cause gold to go higher? I have no idea. I mean, lower interest rates at some point. Who knows? Fear, something happens. Again, who knows? All I'm looking at is the price action. And right now, it looks to me like it wants to push, hot, push higher. And the real key is going to be, do we come up here and take out this level uh, around, where is this? We're looking in the 193 to 194 and a half range in here. And we break above that, we're going to be off to the races in gold. So let's take a look at silver. Silver was very strong this last week. Um, and let me just show you the daily and the weekly. Down a penny for this last week, but I love the way this acted. Look at the gappiness and, and pushing to the upside in here. And uh, right now, I'm watching this trend line. Okay, We pushed above what I call it, labeled as wave one. And I really like to see this break this trend line, which seems to have contained all of this corrective move. And if that's the case, you know, we take break out that trend line and then take out this uh, intermediate wave one high, which is 2394. And I think it'll be off and running if it does that. But this is the picture we've got right now. Again, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt to the bulls. It looks like that's the way this wants to push. OK, that's it for this video. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a member subscriber to this uh, channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a daily basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the membership. Everyone have a great week and a happy Thanksgiving to everyone. If I don't talk to you before then, uh, I'll talk to you on the next video.